Dan Bilzerian's social media is full of cars, models, and money, but we don't think he's going to be posing next to stacks of the $50 million he lost his company in 2019. Bilzerian has many images. He's a trust fund kid, poker player, Instagram celebrity, and the CEO of a cannabis company. That last venture hasn't gone so well, but it's his, quote, experience before becoming a CEO that's really to blame for the way he led his company straight into a $50 million loss. With reports of him using the business like a personal ATM, here's how Bilzerian tanked it so quickly and how he got enough money to put himself in the position in the first place. For a man that likes to show off his fortune, including his toys, like this $1.8 million Shelby Cobra, and his $6 million private plane, losing $50 million is probably not something Dan Bilzerian wants to brag about. But we're going to talk about it anyway, because the loss seems to be almost entirely his fault. Dan Bilzerian is the CEO of Ignite International Brands Limited, a cannabis company that operates in Mexico, Canada, Ireland, the UK, and the US, selling products like CBD-infused toothpicks, nicotine vape juice, and marketing things like vodka, clothing, and water. The company was trying to get in early on the newly legalized market, but in June, their annual report, filed at the Canadian Stock Exchange, posted Canadian $67 million in losses in 2019, which is about $50 million US. So how did things get so bad for Ignite after Bilzerian confidently praised his entrepreneurial skills as he stepped into the new market? Well, the money for Ignite didn't all come from Bilzerian, which might be the reason why such a big loss wasn't quite as much of a bummer for the CEO and more of a blunder on the part of the investors. Ignite made money last year by issuing and selling shares of its company's stock, but it also made a lot of money via debt. Ignite recorded $18.8 million made from proceeds of issuance of shares. Another $14.9 million came from convertible debt, while $17.8 million came from a short-term promissory note. Basically, the company had a lot of other people's money that it had to be responsible for in order to make the business work. Unfortunately for them, that responsibility seems to include spending large amounts of investors' money on things like marketing, even when the company wasn't making enough money to justify the spending. Apparently, Ignite liked to throw marketing parties at lavish places complete with tons of hired models, expensive food and alcohol, and celebrity guests. That sounds like typical Dan Bilzerian, but it's a whole other thing to party with your own money than to shell out investors' money. In 2019, Ignite lost about $32.3 million just on operational costs, which includes things like the company's marketing and promotions, leases on offices, and compensation for staff and executives. That's way over the company's proposed marketing budget of $16.7 million, and it's more than twice what the company managed to actually make according to its sales revenue. For every dollar in sales, which was about $7.2 million, the company spent almost $2 on general costs for a company-busting total of $13.8 million. Not that you should be surprised that Bilzerian can burn through that much cash. He's basically been using Ignite like his own personal piggy bank. He was actually just renting this exorbitant 12-bedroom mansion in the high-class Bel Air neighborhood of LA for $200,000 a month under the company's name. The house, often compared to a nightclub, was being used for parties and various rich guy activities and recently hit the market for $75 million. This gives you more than just a hint at the kind of business activities Bilzerian's company has been paying for. Bilzerian also happens to own stakes in other companies headquartered in Montana and Nevada. Cash from Ignite has also ended up paying for salaries, business expenses, traveling expenses, and even licensing fees for these companies. Yeah, that doesn't seem fishy at all. Some of the specific amounts spent on strange business expenses have been reported by outlets like TMZ and appear in court documents. Ignite is being sued by its former president, Curtis Heffernan, who says he was fired because he didn't approve of some of Bilzerian's strange expenses. He says these include $15,000 for a ping pong table, $40,000 for a rock climbing wall, and $130,340 on a bohemian photo shoot. The company even paid $26,000 to boost Bilzerian's Instagram followers and paid for the travel expenses of the models who follow him everywhere he goes. Heffernan also claims there was $75,000 spent on a paintball field, about $60,000 on a Star Wars gun set, $31,000 on pool renovations, $88,000 on a vault, and, get this, $50,000 on a bed frame. Now, we're just left to wonder whether this was all personally used by Bilzerian, or if he was shelling out expensive uh, bed frames and Star Wars toys to other members of the company too. Although we know that he was definitely sharing some of these riches with his pack of models. 
An auditor's report from June 2020 also points out a few more of these insane expenses, including an Ignite payment of $793,000 for a yacht rental, $128,000 for a two-night stay in London, and Instacart deliveries for everyday things like laundry detergent, razors, and trash bags that seem like personal expenses rather than necessary business spending. It was apparently after Heffernan started making a fuss and told Dan he'd have to get rid of his $200,000 a month LA house rental that Bilzerian had had enough and jumped in as chairman of the board. At this point, he said he needed the house for pool parties because apparently all good businesses need pool parties, and then, in June of 2020, Heffernan was fired. In response to the lawsuit against them, Ignite has promised to countersue and has challenged everything that Heffernan has brought into question. So, despite it being pretty clear that Bilzerian's business is going under because of unnecessarily frivolous spending and a little shuffling of funds behind the scenes, Ignite's board of directors has released a statement that points out some other factors as to why the company isn't doing so hot. In an attempt at damage control, the company says it will need to raise capital in order to fund its operations and continue its existing and prospective expansion into strategic markets. Its needs for more capital comes from uncertain capital market conditions, including those created by the pandemic, an inability to secure strategic partnerships in key markets, and an unfavorable perception of the Ignite brand. Well, at least the company is aware that people aren't viewing Ignite as a lucrative business right about now. The statement goes on to say that there is no assurance that it will be able to obtain adequate financing in the future, or that such financing will be on terms that are acceptable to the company. So operations could cease pretty easily if Bilzerian and his budding business don't get their hands on some more cash fast. They do have a strategy to make this happen though. The company reported receiving almost $1.2 million in Paycheck Protection Program loans, and Ignite intends on applying for loan forgiveness. Do you think Bilzerian's company deserves a bailout? Let's have a look at how Dan earned his money in the first place to get an idea whether or not this entrepreneur can pull his company back from the precipice. Now, Dan Bilzerian is the kind of guy who loves luxury, and excessive luxury at that. He says he's partied so hard that he had two heart attacks before age 35. He also started a fake campaign for the presidency and tried to trademark his face using a portrait painted of himself. He's been blowing through cash, but he claims that he's a self-made millionaire. He has a net worth of about $200 million, and according to him, it comes from playing poker, being insta-famous, and tons of endorsement deals. Dan Bilzerian's poker career started humbly, according to him. He says he turned $750 into $10,000, then flew to Vegas and turned that $10,000 into $187,000, and that's just how he got his start. That same year, the Daily Mail described him as a poker champion worth $100 million. Since then, he stuck with the self-made shtick, comparing himself to Bill Gates and claiming he won over $50 million playing poker. But it's pretty fair to say that Bilzerian didn't have to worry about money much growing up. He received at least some of his money from his father, Paul Bilzerian. Paul actually owes the Security and Exchange Commission SEC, about $62 million and has paid back very little of that. He also ended up serving time for fraud. Despite his father owing money, Bilzerian has owned up to being a beneficiary of some trust fund money, even though he hasn't said how much. According to a Paul Bilzerian bankruptcy judgment in 2001, both Dan and his brother Adam's trust was worth roughly $11.96 million in Symmetric stock. Dan was entitled to half of that. The Bilzerian brothers ended up paying about 30% of that trust to the SEC back in 2014, but Dan did get the go-ahead to sell 1.7 million Symmetric shares. Dan Bilzerian is also involved with companies related to his father, all of which seem to be designed to help protect his assets. Starting in April of 2007, he was listed as the President, Secretary, Treasurer, and Director of Caligula Corporation, which was subject to dissolution by the Florida Secretary of State in 2013 for failing to file an annual report. While Paul Bilzerian was never officially listed as an owner or worker in the company, they were accused of using it as a vessel for him to discreetly conduct business, with Paul being accused of having control of the business operations, even though Dan was the owner. During that time, Dan and his father's former lawyer had Caligula enter into a partnership called Haircut Partners LLP in an attempt to collect debts from Bicoastal Holding Company, one of Paul Bilzerian's companies. But that was also accused in the Florida court of being misused. So basically, the Bilzerians seem to be doing everything they can to get their money back and make even more. In the meantime though, it won't look to you like Dan Bilzerian is in any sort of financial trouble. I mean, just take a look at his collection of vehicles, which includes everything from a $250,000 Rolls Royce Ghost, a massive Mercedes-Benz G63 SUV worth $975,000, and a $400,000 white Lamborghini Aventador that he sold on eBay in 2015 because he didn't have room for it in his garage anymore. 
The loss of $50 million also doesn't seem to be getting him down too much. He spent a part of the summer on a massive yacht in Croatia, surrounded by Ignite models, leading people to wonder if he's really still spending Ignite's money out in the open like that. Not that we'd be super surprised, considering that people close to Dan say he'll wrap anything in an Ignite logo and call it an expense. Considering Ignite's stock dropped 13% after the company's losses became public, and the board of directors' statement has shown the company's weaknesses, it's going to be hard for the up-and-coming CBD company to bounce back from where it's fallen. It's very likely that Bilzerian isn't the only one responsible for the company blowing through its budgets, but since he's the biggest name attached to it, he can probably look forward to a lot more bad press where Ignite is concerned. But he's brushing it off and beaching it up with his posse right about now, so perhaps Bilzerian is less worried about the fallout than he should be. Or he just knows he always has a habit of making it out of financial turmoil without a scratch. Only time will tell if Dan Bilzerian will be on the hook for the company's failures, or if being born rich really does give you a free pass for life, even after you lose millions buying trampolines and Star Wars collectibles. Do you think any of Dan Bilzerian's self-made claims ring true? Do you think Ignite will come back from a disastrous 2019? Let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to The Riches for more. Thanks for watching, and see you next time.